What is the best exercise routine to achieve your goals? Well, this is a common question that I get asked, so let's get stuck in. Before we delve any further, let me firstly introduce myself. My name is Matthew Sinclair, and I'm a physiotherapist who's not only been obsessed over the years with getting myself in great shape, but I've also been obsessed with helping my clients get in their best shapes as well. Clients like Ben here, who's in his 40s, get a six pack, and clients like Brandon transform their bodies, all through smart, scientific training strategies, which is exactly what I'm gonna be covering in this video today. Now, as a quick caveat, if you have performance-based goals, such as training for a marathon, an event of some sort, this video won't be covering the specifics of that. This video is for those whose goal is getting in great shape, losing body fat, and gaining lean muscle. Firstly, the most efficient form of exercise for getting in great shape is resistance-based training. This includes bodyweight training, even from home if needs be, and weights in the gym. The reason this is the most efficient means of exercising to improve your aesthetic physique is because it is far more effective in building muscle in comparison to anything else. And don't worry, you won't turn into the Hulk overnight in case you're worried about getting too bulky. That's exactly like saying you don't want to drive your car in case you become as good as driving as you know, someone like Lewis Hamilton. It's not, it's not that easy. The other significant benefit that resistance-based training has over any other form of exercise, it has greater propensity to increase your metabolism. This means you can afford to eat more food without gaining excess body fat. Secondly, let's talk about training frequency and the structure associated with varying training frequencies. Most of my clients are busy, and if that's you, it's not a problem. If that's the case, I would actually recommend initially starting off with three sessions per week, ideally spread across the week. So for example, rather than cram three sessions in from Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, if possible, I would encourage you to add a rest day in between those sessions because it'll allow you to recover more between the sessions and ultimately uh, push harder and have more effective training sessions when you are actually working out. As a caveat to that though, if you are so busy to where you have to cram the sessions in back to back, that's still okay. As far as structure, if you're training three times per week, I would actually suggest doing full body workouts where you're able to hit all of your major muscle groups multiple times per week. On the other hand, if you have more time or you've hit a plateau training three times a week, you may want to add in a fourth session. Now at this stage, doing full body workouts won't be the best use of your time. You may struggle to recover properly if training each body part four times a week, for example. At this point, it would then be appropriate to move to doing a push-pull leg training split. So in other words, you'll do a push session, which is where you'll focus on all upper body pressing movements, such as bench press, shoulder press, tricep extensions. You'll then do an upper body pull session where you'll do things like bicep curls, deadlifts, bent over rows. And the third session will be a session dedicated to everyone's favorite, mine included legs that's that's obviously a joke if if you're new here and the fourth session will be dedicated to bring up any of the aspects of your physique that are currently lagging so for example if you really want to get your arms to grow or your calves for example this would be a session to dedicate to those lagging muscle groups for most people training those four times per week will be more than sufficient in achieving great physique in fact whenever i was training at my peak several years ago i was regularly competing in competitions, taking photo shoots, etc. I would have trained four times a week intensively and that was more than sufficient for me to, to achieve a great physique. But perhaps you're a really advanced trainer, perhaps you've been you know, consistently training for a few years, you've made great progress already, but you feel like, you feel like you're at a plateau. Adding in an additional fifth session could be beneficial in that instance. If so, you may want to opt for training one or two muscle groups per session rather than doing a full body session or a push-pull leg session split, for example. The reason for this is it'll allow you to train more intensively with each muscle group as you're able to add more training volume in those individual sessions. So now that we've talked about exercise type, the training frequency and the structure associated with that, let's talk about some of the principles for training so you can make the most out of your sessions. Number one, and I can't emphasize this enough, make sure you're progressively overloading, simply meaning you need to gradually increase your workload in order for your body to adapt. If you keep lifting you know, the same weight for the same number of reps, week in, week out, your body has no reason to get stronger. To progressively overload, you could increase the weight, increase the number of repetitions that you do, even slow down the tempo at which you perform the repetition. These are all great ways to progressively overload. 
Number two, focus on lifting with a proper technique as much as possible, but don't over concern yourself with maintaining absolutely perfect technique on your last few reps of a set if you're close to fatigue, providing it's safe to do so. Too many people are concerned with lifting with you know, absolutely perfect form that they stop their set with more in the tank because their technique isn't the same as it was on your first you know, or second rep. Of course, that's not gonna be the case and it's totally normal to struggle a little bit. In order for you to get strong, you need to have a good technique so the exercise is safe and so you're working the intent of muscle group. However, it needs to be said that you also need to test your muscles sufficiently in order for them to adapt. Even if that means you know shaking, losing your perfect technique, in order to actually bring yourself to the point where those muscles are completely fatigued. Number three, and again, this is a really common question, should you do high repetitions or low repetitions? Research shows that both are effective in gaining muscle. However, in order for you to get stronger and increase your muscle, you need to be pushing yourself with enough intensity to where you're close to failure and properly fatiguing during a set. For this reason, I would encourage you to focus on lower reps with a higher weight. Sets of eight to 12 would be you know, sufficient for most people. And the reason for this is that it's easier to bring yourself to failure on lower reps. Most people can't bring themselves to failure with low weight and high repetitions. For example, if I was to do calf raises with no weight on my back, I might be able to do 100, 120 reps, and I'd feel that intensive burning sensation that I'm sure you're all familiar with, which might force me to stop due to discomfort before I've actually reached fatigue. And the reason that's important to note is there's a big difference between discomfort and fatigue. If I was to do the same exercise with weights on my back, heavy enough to where I could only possibly do physically, you know, 12 repetitions, not because of discomfort limiting me, but because I physically don't have the strength to do any more, that would bring me closer to fatigue than the higher rep set. So I'd encourage you to opt for lower rep sets as the mainstay of your workout routines and have higher rep sets in there, but only to complement your workouts, but not to be the main focus point. So there you have it. Now you should have a better idea on the type of exercise, the frequency of exercise, and some of the main principles that you should bear in mind in order to maximize the results of your training. I hope you found this video useful, and if you did, please make sure to subscribe to the video, like the video, and I'll see you in the next one.